Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over how we have built our internal customer analytics to monitor all of the campaigns that we're running for our customers and get early warnings on anything that we manually need to check. So if you've never seen any of my videos, my name is Eric Noslavsky. I send over a million cold emails a month. And when I first started my business, there was a bunch of things that we would check for manually that now, honestly, we're at such a scale, I can't check for these things manually anymore. And so we have built a system to check for all of these things. So if you are a person who is looking to work with us, you can get a little bit of an insight into how we're going to be monitoring your campaign. And we're not just relying on memory to to make sure that your campaigns are still working or if you're a cold email agency this is going to be a great video for you to see how we built the customer analytics because then you'll be able to build it for yourself for all of the people who are possibly running cold email agencies i know in the past i give away the blueprints and you know you could just use the blueprints in the past i've given away very simple blueprints and people still want me to answer questions and support them on how to use the blueprints and all of those different things so for this video, I'm just going to say that we probably cannot give away these blueprints uh, because just the amount of questions that I'm going to get on using them is going to get a little crazy. So with that disclaimer, we're going to head into the video. So when we onboard a new customer, we need to create a client ID for them. And then once we have a client ID, we need to always be monitoring every campaign that we run for them because we might run three campaigns for somebody. We might run 14 campaigns for somebody. And we need to be monitoring all of the analytics uh, for all of these campaigns. The final thing we need to monitor is sometimes if you look at a campaign on a high level, if you launched the campaign three months ago and you were getting a 70% open rate, then you check it again at a high level. And today you're getting a 50% open rate. Everything could look good. But until you click into it and you see, oh my gosh, yesterday we had a 14% open rate, you wouldn't know to create new inboxes. So we also need to monitor all of the campaigns uh, on a all time horizon, a yesterday time horizon, a weekly time horizon, and a monthly time horizon so that we can get a full circle view of, of everything that we need to know. And then there's things that we're gonna get notified about uh, immediately that we're gonna get into. So if certain criteria happens about the campaign, my team and I get automated Slack messages about all those things. So we're just gonna jump in. The first thing that we do is we have an onboarding form in ClickUp. So my stack is, this is make.com. We're using SmartLead to send the emails and then ClickUp is our project management tool. And then I communicate with customers on Slack. You could probably get away with doing this without ClickUp. You could do the whole thing with Google Sheets. I just use ClickUp because it's our project management tool. I just got a bill for $170 and we're just gonna keep using it. Yeah, you know, I, I like using ClickUp and the automations that come with it. You, again, you could probably get away with just Google Sheets. So what we do is we have them fill out a ClickUp form where then what we're doing is we're watching for the new task and then it you know gets the task. And so in the ClickUp form, we have a bunch of questions that we want to ask them about what kind of customers they're going after, um, who's their best customer, who should we send emails as, all of these different things. When we get all of that, we're going to call the smart lead API to create a new client access for them. So we don't have to do it manually. And then I don't have to also, it's very important that you create this because then down the line, you auto, you want to have new clients automatically added to your databases and things like that. You don't want to have to remember to do these things. Then we send a Slack message with the new client access already uh, generated so that we can give the client access to our clients. And then we edit the custom field inside of ClickUp with the client ID so that we can tie everything back together uh, again eventually. And so then the next step is we have to get all the clients from SmartLead and add it to our analytics database. So we have a spreadsheet up here that I'm pretty sure that you can see. Yes, you can see this where this is a, you know, this is all of our client data, everything that we're monitoring, uh, you know, all this crazy stuff is in here. We want to make sure that this is always the, the database of truth and the database of record for all of our clients. So we keep this updated. So I run this automation every Monday and Thursday, just because that's just as often as we need to do it. This, um, this API call lists all the client IDs that we have in SmartLead and then adds them to our master database, which I'm using Google Sheets as our master database. The reason I'm not using ClickUp as our master database is because there's some math that we need to get into how to do. And it's easier to do that in Google Sheets than it is ClickUp. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to show all the HTTP calls because I don't want to hide all my API keys. And this is going to be kind of a long video and I'm not going to make it longer. So anyway, again, we're listing all of the client IDs with this API call. And then we're making sure that they're all added to our Google Sheets. We just have a filter here that if the row already exists, we don't need to add it. We also don't need to update it because there's no point. So all it's doing is if the row already exists, it doesn't pass through to this over here. But if it doesn't exist, then we add the row. So now what we've done is we've onboarded a new client. We've generated the client ID for them. We have applied that client ID to our project management software. And we have made sure that our source of truth, our Google Sheet with all of the fancy records in it, always has our data uploaded as well. And so now the next thing actually that we're going to get into is this is really the fancy stuff in here. And so what this workflow does, this workflow basically lists every campaign that we are running. So at this point, we are running 425 campaigns or something like that that we're monitoring. This API call lists out all of those campaigns and we get all of the campaign IDs and we search Google Sheets to see where that exists. And if it exists, we update the row. And if it doesn't exist, we add the row. So we have this router here to, to get all of those things done. And then depending on if we added a row or we updated a row, the workflow is the same as we go through. So remember, we listed all the campaigns here. This first API call, this is where we're getting the top level analytics of all of our um, campaigns. So I'm getting how many emails have we sent for the life of the campaign? What's the open rate for the life of the campaign? What's the response rate for the life of the campaign? The bounce rate for the life of the campaign, everything. On this one, we're getting the analytics of the campaign yesterday. So how many emails did we send yesterday? What was the open rate yesterday? How many leads did we add yesterday? What are the leads not started yesterday? All of those things. Well, no, we have to get that from here. You can't do leads not started for yesterday, but anyway. Then here we are doing the last seven days. So again, we have a window of looking at everything in the past seven days. And then here we're doing the past 30 days. What we then do is we update the rows inside of Google Sheets with all of the API calls that we have here. If you are somebody who uses make.com, you might think that you have to build this and then do an API call and then change the Google sheet and then API call and then change the Google sheet. You don't have to do that. Just wrap it all up into one over here. I will show the, the Google sheet uh, in a little while. I just want to get done with the, the make uh, flows in here. And so this is how we keep a huge database of, of all of our customers. Uh, well, no, all of the campaigns and all of the analytics going on with our campaigns on an all-time basis, a yesterday basis, a seven-day basis, and a 30-day basis. Then, now we have all of that data. Now what we need to do is we need to get all of that data into ClickUp. So that client ID that we added when they first got onboarded uh, into ClickUp, we list all of the tasks, and then we're searching in Google Sheets for that client ID to be matched up. Once we get that client ID, what we're going to do is we're going to edit the custom fields inside of ClickUp with the data that is associated with that client ID. So uh, essentially what's happening is, again, we're just listing out all of the tasks, then we're searching for where that data is, and then we're applying that data to the, uh, the ClickUp table over here. Now what you'll also see is, so now this is the important part that if you are a prospective customer of Growth Nginx or you're a cold email agency that wants to see these things, this is the real reason why I built this, is this filter right here, where we get an automatic Slack notification every day at 5.05 a.m. I get a Slack notification if something is wrong with the campaign that we should be calling out immediately. So if we open up this filter, if the average open rate is less than 38%, we get a Slack notification. Or... If your leads not contacted is below 500, we get a Slack notification. If yesterday we sent less than 150 emails, we get a Slack notification. If the open rate yesterday is below 38%, we get a Slack notification. And if the average inbox reputation dips below 95%, we get a Slack notification. So all of these are the most common reasons that there's going to be issues with campaigns. Either the inbox uh, health is going down or we're just not sending enough emails for the campaigns which we immediately want to jump on top of and, and get into. And so we have all these automations in here to make sure that that happens. Then the last thing that we're doing is we also have a board where we're just watching every single campaign that we launch in its entirety 
completely separate. So we have a client view and then we have a campaign view. This is our campaign view. It's much simpler. All it's doing is listing all of the tasks, getting the high level analytics, and then just, it's actually just getting the analytics for yesterday. Cause on the campaign view, that's, that's all I really care about. So that's how we set this one up as well. And now I'm basically just going to go into the complexities of the, the Google sheet where, so, and I'm trying not to give away all of our customers here. But so you can see that these are all of the analytics that we're tracking. So I have total leads through, so this is client data. So this is rolling up all of the campaign data and we're ha we have a sum of all of the total leads that we have sent. We have the total leads currently on their lists. We have the amount of leads that are not contacted. So how many more leads do we have you know, in queue? How many leads are in progress? And then how many leads have we completed? All of these are all sum formulas from the total database. This sum formula is basically the duct tape holding this entire table together. Um, I had to ask ChatGPT how to get this done. I had no clue that this sum formula even exists. I didn't even know that a sum if formula existed to be completely honest. And so what this is doing is it is uniting the client ID that we have over here. And in total database, there is, and hang on, so see how in total database, we have campaign IDs and then we have client IDs. Well, there's going to be, you know, all of the campaign IDs are unique, but the client IDs, there's going to be repeats of. And so what we want to do is we want to unite the numbers of all of the campaigns that have the same client ID. And so that's what we're doing here is we're uniting all of the numbers that have the same client ID. And this is what's taking care of that. So then these are all of the, you know, the most important metric that I look for right here is the leads not contacted because I always want to make sure that we have more leads in your campaigns to always keep them full. Then these are our top level analytics that we always want to keep track of. This is the lifetime of the campaign. This is yesterday. This is the last seven days. And then this is the last 30 days. And then we have inbox health criteria over here. So we have all of the total inboxes. We have our active inboxes, we have inactive inboxes, and we've got some math going on over here to, to check the, the reputation of all of the inboxes. And um, again, I would just ask ChatGPT how to get this done. Uh, literally, I was putting into ChatGPT like, okay, I have you know client IDs that are all of the same in you know client data, or no, in total database DD. I have, and I'm looking for the client ID, you know, in B5, like I, I just described it and it did, did it perfectly. So please do not send me a LinkedIn message asking how I did this formula. Um, just ask ChatGPT and it's going to get it done. So yeah, now we have everything integrated with this database. You can see like there's some things that we still need to fix. So we, you know, it says you've exceeded the 60 data requests. Um, what I would have to do is I just have to go into this one and just put delays inside of our, our system right here to make sure that we don't go over the API calls. Um, you know, it could be a, like tweaked and improved a little bit, but it took me a couple hours this past weekend to get this done. And now this just ensures that we're gonna be on top of our game so much more than we already were before. And uh, again, if you are somebody who's looking to work with Growth Engine X, I hope this gives you insight into how much we care about your campaigns. Uh, and if you are a person who is running a cold email agency, I hope this gives you ideas on, on how you could uh, do better for your customers as well. And uh, so with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and got some good automation ideas.